I know this is a bold claim, but this is going to be one of the most spectacular moments of our lifetime. If you haven't yet heard about the solar eclipse coming on April 8th, you need to buckle up. No matter what you know or don't know, you're going to see some things here on this video that will make you think twice before discounting this as just another event. I'm also going to show you the exact path of the eclipse years that you're going to need to be on the lookout for, but one of them is 1865. It might just be a location where this solar eclipse is entering in on the United States. At the end of this episode, we're going to be getting into that exact location and what it may mean. What you're looking at now is the path of the total eclipse, as well as how what percentage of the eclipse you're going to be able to see if you live further from the path of totality. And if you haven't yet already heard, no, you're not going to want to look at this with your bare eyes. You're so magnificent that if you think about it, the moon is 400 times smaller than the sun, but yet it is 400 times the distance from the sun perfectly aligned so that this thing could occur at this perfect time. And the last time that we had a full eclipse was in 2017, which was another very interesting year. We need to talk about some of the cities that this eclipse is going through. If you zoom in on Ohio and Indiana, there's a name of these towns that you might just know, Nineveh. Yeah, but this is just a coincidence, right? I mean, there has to be with so many towns named Nineveh, they just happen to fall in the line of the full solar eclipse. Well, what's even more interesting is actually there's only seven towns named Nineveh in America, and all of them are within the general vicinity of this full eclipse, and two of them fall right in line. The son of man named, I don't know, Jesus, who said in Matthew 12, 39, only an evil adulterous generation would demand a miraculous sign, but the only sign I will give them is the sign of the prophet Jonah. So if that was all, I mean, you could just discount that, right? But here's where it gets really interesting. The 2017 eclipse crossed America diagonally from the northwest to the southeast, but the upcoming eclipse of 2024 will do the opposite, creating a crisscross over the land, essentially marking the nation. Get this, though, the last letter in the Hebrew alphabet is called Tav. These two eclipses combined are literally forming an X over the nation. But then when you include the last annual solar eclipse going over America in October of 2023, it now forms the first letter in the Hebrew alphabet, Aleph. The first and last letters in the Hebrew alphabet are literally being shaped across our nation with this upcoming solar eclipse. Could the one who is the beginning and the end, the Alpha and Omega, eternity himself, be using the signs in the sky to speak to us? Let's go back to Jonah, though, for a moment. Did you know that the day that Jonah walked into Nineveh, there was a solar eclipse? And this has actually been documented as the Assyrian eclipse. And if I told you that there's a scripture in Exodus 4, 8, now check this out. Then the Lord said, if they do not believe you or pay attention to the first sign, they may believe the second. But let's look at another situation that might just be telling us something. In Matthew 24, Jesus said, when the son of man returns, it will be like it was in Noah's day. Well, in Genesis 6, 4, in those days and for some time thereafter, giant Nephilites lived on the earth. If you actually look into this coming month, two breeds of cicadas are going to be coming up out of the ground, especially in the path of this solar eclipse. And when you zoom in where it intercedes near the city Makanda, there's a state park named, and what do you know, Giant City State Park. I mean, what are we going to make of this, right? Are we living in the exact days of Noah where there were so many giants that humanity almost didn't even exist anymore? What does that have to do with today? Well, I don't know. In a world in which an artificial intelligence and DNA intermingling, and it's insane how we don't even know what a human is anymore. I mean, at first we thought there'd be males and females and mothers and fathers, and but now it's whatever you identify as. And and I don't mean that attacking anyone because unfortunately there's even many people watching this video. The enemy has deceived your identity. So the days of Noah and 2024 is coming together closer and closer. Here's where it gets really interesting though. A last Confederate soldier was buried in a place called Shelby Park. It just so happens to be in the city that I'm about to show you. When you look at the path of this solar eclipse, a city lies right in the middle of where it enters in America. And it just so happens to be Eagles Pass, past couple months, especially with the border crossings that have gone insane. And it's been on the mind of even the states versus the federal government. YouTube, just in case you're watching this video and you're like, Gabe's promoting hate or violence. No, this, this video is not promoting any hate, violence. This is not violating your community guidelines, okay? <laughs> Anyways, what I was saying is what is so crazy is how the first eclipse ended at the beginning of the Civil War and the second eclipse begins at the end of the Civil War. Now, 
before I tell you the full conclusion of all of these facts that I've shown you that cannot just be discounted, I want to say thank you to all of the partners and people that want to support this channel. If you have ever wanted to get the gospel out there here on this ministry, not only do we create content that reaches millions of people, but we are constantly sowing and giving to single moms, to struggling families. I've set it up as a 501c3 nonprofit. The link is down in the description below. So how are you really going to get ready for this solar eclipse is probably what you're wondering. And my first encouragement to you is that it's definitely not a good sign to America. It's not God speaking to us that we're doing everything right. To be honest, we have a choice. We can call our own foul and judge ourselves now. Or if we wait long and just keep trying to do things our way, we're going to have to pay the price. Not as if God is just trying to punish us. No, God is actually using the sun and the stars and the moon and the sky to speak to us that it's all not lost, that we can make the choice right now to run back into his presence. God is not looking for some snowflake fans, but he wants his sons and daughters to rise and take a stand. You don't need to be afraid as these times are going to get intense. There's going to be a Goshen, a safe place where you can abide in his presence and he provides for you and you can come out of this greater than before if you humble yourself. I only say this because I love you. Trust me, I'm fighting for you right now. And most importantly, you don't have to be ashamed, be afraid. You don't have to just back down in cowardly fear, but instead we can rise and take the mountain that God has called us to take. And even as I'm speaking to you, I see that many people in your family, with your friends and in your cohort and circles of life, they've spoken against you. They've teared you down. But I hear father himself saying, this is my son. This is my daughter. They are going to obey my voice. They are a sent one and I have them wrapped in my arms. So receive the love of God today. Receive his presence even now. Put aside the distractions. Put aside all the things that can feel like they're so important. But yet, if you really get down to it, nothing is as, as important as simply seeking him because he's already sought after you. He's already believed in you. He's already chosen you. In fact, he's put everything on the table, risking his entire life, dying just for you. I'm not gonna tell you what all these signs exactly mean, but that's a question that you can ask God for yourself. And no matter whether they are true or not, we know he speaks through his word right here. You don't need a pope or a priest to be a middleman between you and God. You can go to him directly today because Jesus, our great high priest, has already paid the price. If you're a young adult or teenager, or you have one in your family or friends, you've got to get this 90 day devotional. I've linked that down in the description below. It's called Built Different. And separate of that, I've recently put out a video where Joe Rogan and Aaron Rodgers, surprisingly, were talking about the same things that I'm talking about, Nephilim and giants and spiritual creatures. And on this video, I reacted to it. And if you don't click right here right now, you'll miss the full episode. So yep, click.